Hi YouTube, it's Diane. Um, I thought I'd do my February update. Um, I hope your February is going well. Ours <laughs> started out really good. Um, but for the past two weeks we've been dealing with a stomach bug. Um, it started on Valentine's Day with my husband. Yeah, I know. And it like skips a few days and then whammy somebody and skips a few more days, whammy somebody else. So it's been interesting. I mean, what do you serve for meals? And they're okay, they're better. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. And how do you explain to a two year old why why he feels this way and ugh. So hopefully you're not dealing with the crud. And it was really weird because my husband brought it home from somewhere and normally he not, he's not the first to get stuff. But um, in the month of February I have, I have a whole mixture of stuff. So we'll just jump in. First thing is from Barnes & Noble I have this little journal. It says trust your crazy ideas. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That, that fits me. What I really like, I like the size and the color, but I also like that on the pages, instead of lines or grids, they're just little dots. So you can use them as lines, you can you know, draw something, you do what you want with it. And so, um, like Jessie Marie on the first page, I wrote all my whips. Yeah, a little over one of these pages. My goals for the year and my guide for what in the world my shorthand means. Uh, I wrote a little bit about January in here. Um, I didn't really have a rotation and, and I was doing the January challenge so I wrote a little bit about that. But, but here's my February. I like that it's this size because if it was bigger I would have to fill in all the page, you know, and, and this doesn't bother me. At all, and I've already started into March for my March plans. So let's jump in. Um, other haul that I have, I don't have a huge amount, but I have this one 365 cross stitch designs. I'm not sure if this is, it, I, it's a British um, from the world of cross stitching. Yeah, so the world of cross stitching, they collect a lot of their designs and put it in here. And as you can see, I have a list of things I would like to do. But I, I do like this little guy. They do a lot with him, and I don't really like him. But this one I do like. And I like this stocking thingy here. What's it called? What is that called? Christmas tidings? We're ready for Santa. Ready for Santa. And then Christmas Tidings is this alphabet that's these reeds. And I've done some alphabets out of these magazines. They stitch up pretty quickly and they're just cute. Um, I really like this one. What is that one called? I'm thinking that one is called Pretty Patchwork. Yes, that one is called Pretty Patchwork. And I'm not going to show you all of these that I want to do, but partially because it'd be hard to not show the pattern, and I don't, I don't want to do that. Can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> uh, here's the beach. Beach Hut Beauties. I'm not a beachy kind of person, but I thought this was cute. Especially, okay, here's where my mind went. See this one? It would not be very, very hard to put a little moon there and make this an outhouse. I had a friend once ask me if I knew of a cross stitch outhouse because she wanted to put it in her bathroom. I didn't. Um, but that would be, <laughs> that 
That'd be kind of cute. Okay, now you know where my mind went. I love this. This is very outside my wheelhouse, but I love this pillow. I wouldn't make it as a pillow because my boys would throw it everywhere, but as a wall hanging, it would be pretty cool. And then, where's that other... Oh, this, this alphabet is so... I love this alphabet. Can't show you the other page. There's a pattern on it. I thought here was my brilliant idea. Don't know how where it'll go, but if you use that alphabet, because they're all like conch shells and ships and lighthouses and anchors, and there's a bird and a map and a compass, rose, starfish. Uh, I think that covers everything. And make like strips. And put it, hang it in my bathroom, kind of a nautical theme in my bathroom, because I got to redo my bathrooms. They really need updating. Uh, new paint and, and something. They need some work. But, um, like, have strips that say, you know, wash hands, uh, use soap, uh, you brush teeth. You know, just kind of have that kind of thing and put it on the wall. Kind of like a big old instruction list on my wall. Anyway, I don't have a clue what it would look like. <laughs> I'll show it if I ever do it, but yeah. Can you tell I'm tired? Okay, and then I made some needle minders. And I had some buttons at Joann's and like these I got at Hobby Lobby. Joann's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's. This one I made for my daughter who cross stitches. Uh, Michaels. I think I got this one at Michaels. This was part of a pair of earrings. I already made one. This one. Oh, I didn't bring it in here. I have a new favorite tool. It's a needle case, and I was I'm going to do a video about January's challenge, and I will show it then and talk about how I used it. But this little thing was on it with double-sided tape. Why would you stick that on there with double-sided tape? Uh, you're supposed to throw this thing in your in your work bag. It would never stay. So, and the nest kept coming off. And I love the nest. I think it's so cute. I thought, you know what? I'm going to make it a needle minder. It's a perfect size. So, it's a needle minder now. Um, and these are made with the black ceramic magnets. I use those for parking threads in my haids. And then th the rest are the silver, whatever that word is, magnets. And of course I love my froggy. My froggy. I love froggies. He was a little tricky to, because he's not, I had to kind of fill him in with glue and then put the minder on. So I made those. And... No, I'm never going to make and sell needle minders because there's so many wonderful people who do that. Um, I'm sorry, my budget doesn't allow me to get all of them I would love to order from you guys. And then I also bought this, the Just Cross Stitch April. I got my list. This one, as you can see, I had a number of things I wanted to do in it. And... I'm not talking too soft. I am really tired. I think these little girls are absolutely adorable. I love this one. And then this one climbing the tree. I, I just, and that's not my go-to thing, you know? And then the hummingbird that was on the front. And I love this Move one cross. Although I guess there's a lot of Smyrna stitches in it, Smyrna crosses. I had enough of that on one of my projects. So I might, if I do that, I might just do something else besides Smyrna's. And 51 or 57. 51. This is another beautiful piece by Liz Almond. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Love the colors. <clears throat> but then I am going to stitch 
this piece for the cross stitch finish line salve that begins March 20th. And I am going to use the is it Leaks or Gassed? Maybe both. Both. The Weeks Dye Works and the Gassed Threads. I did have to order the chalk, but at my, um, I went to my LNS and they didn't have it. They were out. They had a slot for it, but they were out. And so I was able to pay for it and they're going to just ship it to me when it comes in. I bought two fibers and that was one that I bought because they were out of it. I am not stitching it on the, what's the color, slate. I don't really like it on the slate. The winter one I think would look good on the slate, but I don't like this one. I am stitching it on this. My 18 count Heaven uh, Ada that I got from Fabrics by LJ. And I told you that I am not one that just has fabric without a pro I got a project for it. I think it'll look gorgeous. It'll definitely fit. I've done the math, so it'll definitely fit. And I love the blues on this, you know, springy. Oh, I think it'll be good. And then these are the colors that it, it calls for. And this, it's called Capri by uh, Weeks Dye Works. It'll look fabulous on this. And the chalk with the white kind of outline. Oh, it's going to look good. It is going to look good. And then you ha you kind of bounce that off of these. I did a floss toss to make sure this is what I wanted to do. These will look great on this fabric. Those will look great on here. And then, then think of the chalk, which is white, essentially. So, yeah, I'm doing that for that stitch along that starts March 20th, um, and that'll be what I, I do for that stitch along. I probably will not finish it in the month of March, and there's some reasons for it, but I know that many people know this, that uh, Nora Corbet contributed a design to this particular issue. Queen Anne's Lace, and wouldn't you know, I got a new start. <sighs> this fabric is also by LJ, and it's the other piece. I, I bought two pieces when I, I made my purchase, because I'd, I'd won a special discount, and um, this is 32 count gel blend. It's called Georgia Peach. My original piece was roughly 18 by 35, so I've cut this down. I need to, to zigzag this one edge because he, if you're not sure, familiar with his fabrics, he does serge them, but obviously since I cut this one piece, that piece is not serged. Um, this is roughly 18 by 14, and she'll fit on here perfectly. I did have to order the water lilies because Stitchville was out of that because apparently she must be a popular pattern, the Fraise du Bois which I'm probably mispronouncing. <clears throat> um, but yeah, bummer that that fell into my lap. But if you, as of, of February, I didn't check today, I should have checked this morning, um, that particular pattern, the Queens and Lace pattern, was available for free download off of the Just Cross Stitch magazine website. I do not know how long it will be there, so if you would like it, I suggest you check there, and you can download it and print it off. That's what I originally did before I had the magazine, um, because then I, I thought, oh, I wonder if I could put it on here, and then I was able to figure out the size and everything, and it fits on here perfectly. So then um, check out the Just Cro the Google Just Cross Stitch magazine, and you should come up, I think it's Annie's Attic or something along that line, and... There's a tab on there that says Featured Designs, and that one should be available for free download, at least in February 2016. Again, today is the 25th of February 2016, and I did not check to see if it was still available. But, you know, what am I going to do with this piece? 
This is the remainder of that piece, Georgia Peach, 32 count gel blend. And this is roughly 18 by 21. And the other piece, let me grab it real quick. You notice that this is more pink, so the piece went from a lot of oranges over here to a lot of pinks over here. And I had the pinks would look really good on this one. So this one is more orangey, and again I have to do something with that edge. Otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. Well, in this article that they interviewed Nora Corbet, um, and it was a really nice article. I'm trying to find the article because I, oh, there it is, 26. They had this really nice article where they interviewed, every issue they are, interview a designer in this time they interviewed Nora Corbet. And, I mean, the article is wonderful. And it talks about her mom, who, uh, Marilyn Levitt Emblem, or Emblem Levitt, Marilyn Levitt Emblem, uh, Lavender and Lace, my all-time favorite designer. Um, Nora is my second. Well, I, was re I read through the article, and it's a really good article. <coughs> Excuse me. The Feather Fairy. I love her sass. Look at that little sway. Her, her hips are just going. And yeah, she reminded me very much of my seven-year-old daughter who likes to walk on her toes. So, she is going on here. Which is why I cut the fabric the way I did. Because she will fit on 18 by 21. Because she's not a full-size mirror. And the other one on the 18 by 14. So, she doesn't have any water lilies. Um, she does have two Krennics that I did pick up and one bead, which I think I have in my selection. I am one when I do a mirror like this, I will like buy the pattern and maybe the fabric together. And then I get all the DMC threads and then I get all the specialty threads. And then eventually I get the beads. It, it kind of spreads the cost out. That works really well for me. So she's going to be a new start. I think I'm going to start her for a different stitch along. Um, which I'll talk about in a minute. I know, she's so freaking up. And I do have a finish um, for my round robin. The project this month was from Tara C. And she's in the same round robin that I am in the... the theme is samplers, and here's the one she chose. It's the Simply Jane Austen by the Sampler Girl. And I do love Jane Austen. And this is Tara's fabric. I, I think it's interesting that she finished the edge with a little bit of bias binding. Um, I This is a picture of this plus fabric, and they do surge their fabrics, but Tara must have been, uh, been concerned that you know sending it here, sending it there, sending it here, sending it there. She didn't want any fraying, so she she did that. I've never seen that before, so I thought I'd point that out. But here's where her pattern is now, and the Springfield Stitcher did I think this section here, and I did this section here. I got a stitch, Mr. Darcy. Of course, you think, oh, it's an easy design. And I had to frog it. I did dance cards, and then I did Mr. Darcy, and I started going up to do this heart, and I realized I was off on Mr. Darcy, and I thought, what in the world? And I counted, 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 counted. Well, here, back here on this R, I had this whole RDS was off a row, or a column. Now, if it was my piece, I would have left it. I would have left it and just compensated down here. But it's not my piece. <laughs> so I had to frog it. And um, Tara did this all in the DMCs. So I had to frog it. The heart's correct. It's always been correct. And then I finished the heart. And then I went and corrected Mr. Darcy. And corrected the RDS here on the dance cards. 
And then I did stitch the shoes, and then I have my initials over here. So I love the colors on this. They're, they're really nice. Um, sometimes DMC gets a bad rap. You know, we think, oh, we should use the, the special fibers. But really, DMC is a good quality floss. I also started this one in January, Stitching Forever Housework Whenever. And ta-da, it is done. This fabric, I'm calling it khaki. I lost the tag, and I'm thinking it's the 28 count. It's definitely even weave. I'm calling it khaki because it's too dark for a mushroom. And the colors in here, it calls for five um, Gast and Weeks dye works. I did not have any of those. But I loved how the greens and purples played off each other. So I just went through my Gast and Weeks collection, because I like the variegation, and especially in these, these big blocks that you can see. And I went through my Gast and my Weeks um, collection, and I found similar colors. So what did I use? I used on the red here is called cherry wine. I believe that's a ghast. Yeah, cherry wine is a ghast. The words are done in mulberry, and mulberry is a uh, weak dye works. I believe. I believe it is. And then this dark green here is called blue spruce. This block of green here is called baby spinach. This block of purple is called sugar plum. And the sugar plum is down here, and the baby spinach is up there. Now down here you can kind of see the variegation. I think that's really cute. So it is done. And this was for the finish, a mini sow with the cross stitch finish line group. Done, yay. Not sure how I want to finish that. Um, I do not think it would look good as a no sew cube or a standing cube I, because of the colors and kind of the shape. I don't think it would look nice. So I'm thinking like a, a stand up frame or um, maybe even a wall hanging. I'm not sure. So I'll finish that next month. Well, Probably not this next month. Um, I had planned on doing a fully finished object for the finished line sal, but I'm sorry, with the kids being sick, I, I haven't wanted to get everything out. I, I've been trying to keep everything very well contained um, to avoid any puking on my projects, to be honest. So, yeah, that, that didn't happen. I have the materials for it. It'll get done. It just didn't happen this month. My daughter, my middle daughter, has been cross-stitching for probably two or three years, and I was going to bring her project in, and I forgot. But um, on her 13th birthday, which was February 3rd, Heaven and Earth had a sale. It had, yeah. By the time I think I have all my heaven and earth, <laughs> then Michelle has a sale and pulls me back in. So I talked to her. I said, "Did you want? It? Would you ever want to do a, a heaven and earth?" And she is doing a full coverage project now, a dimensions kit. Um, again, I was going to bring it in. I'll have to remember that next video. But she's doing an awesome job on it. And yes, I'm very biased when it comes to my children. So I showed her the story keeps, and she thought, oh, those are nice. Nothing really grabbed her. And then I showed her the quick stitches, and nothing really grabbed oops, nothing really grabbed her again. And then I showed her a piece I had thought I would... Oh, that's not right. Right. I thought I would actually stitch for her. And she said, yes, that is the piece. So this is the piece. Mini Amethyst by Rachel Anderson. I did print it off because I have the PDF, but I don't have a color printer. And <clears throat> this is the same series that Jessie Marie was doing hers. Um, was it Mini Opal, Mini Pearl? 
without the straw hat and the Grand Ole Opry, but I just totally dated myself there. But then I was thinking, okay, it'd be nice for me to walk alongside her, but I, okay, I have two stitchers stitched the same design at the same time from the essentially physically same copy is breaking copyright. Having two stitchers stitch the same design at the same time, each with their own copy, is not breaking copyright. But I thought, well, I don't want to have two of the exact same pattern. Yes, I do have another child with a February birthday, but you know he's a boy and he probably wants a dragon or lion or something. So I chose this one. It is Mini Ruby. It is the same series. Uh, Ruby is my birthstone, and it is also my youngest daughter's birthstone. So essentially, I'm stitching this for her. I had asked my daughter, uh, you know, some of the patterns from Heaven and Earth have the background removed as an option. You can just buy it now because somebody must have requested the background removed in the past, and Michelle has made it available. Uh, Mini Amethyst is not one of them. So I asked her if she wanted me to remove the background, and she said, oh, no, Mom, I and she loves all this intricacy here. Well, on Mini Ruby, the backgrounds are the same. They, they're a little different colorway, and you know maybe a, a gem is where a butterfly is on one versus the other. But I am going to, we're going to do a mini, my daughter and I, we're doing a mini birthstone sow. Um, very informal. We're going to start it this summer. There's no Facebook group or sign up or anything for it. <clears throat> You're welcome to join us. I don't know the date we're going to start, but it, it's just going to be us. I f want to walk alongside her with her first aid. I want to teach her, you know, okay, start in the upper left corner as you're looking at the pattern. Um, I'm going to have her do some parking. She already does cross country pretty well. Um, parking, marking your chart, waist knots. She wants to do it on 18 count, which is a great count to do a first aid on, in my opinion. Um, so we'll do two strands. So we'll use the loop method, which she's familiar with, but I'm going to have her do the waist knot to end it off, to become familiar with that. Uh, I'm going to have her probably use a Q-snap, kind of as her because you can use a Q-snap as a scroll frame. Uh, Craft Fun Forever on YouTube did a video on that. Um, what else am I going to think about? I want to walk through with her. Because she knows the basic cross. She understands all of that. Um, oh, gritting. We, I watched Jennifer, Jennifer A. I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher your last name. I have a French maiden name, so and my married name is Dutch. People always add extra letters in my last name. Um, so I, I hate to mispronounce somebody else's last name. But Jennifer A. Uh, she did a tutorial on gridding and I have never fully gridded a project so we are going to fully grid these projects just to see do we like it, do we not. If we do then great, if not it, it, we don't have to do it on another project. Very simple. But um, I felt that because those backgrounds are very similar to kind of have me in the same area of the pattern as she is, at least to start. Chances are she'll t take off with it and get hers done before I do mine, finish mine. But And mine is a little, a little bigger, but not much. Uh, so between now and then, I think I have fabric that will fit both of them. I, I think I do. And um, don't be surprised if my camera cuts out. <laughs> Just I'm getting about 30 minutes here of my babbling, and uh, yeah, it likes to just say, you know what, you're done. Um, I think I have a piece that will fit. I know it'll fit one of them, if not both, of fabric. So we're going to do that and start gathering our threads. We went through my extra DMC and about half and half for each project, the color-wise. Um, bobbins, so we're that's our plan. We're gonna do that, and of course, my youngest daughter was with us, and we just started teaching her. She's seven. Uh, 
Um, and she's doing really well. She, when she is stitching, she's asking really good questions, good tension, taking her time, learning things. Um, it kind of freaked her out. She had a block of color, and then it went over three. Mom, I don't understand that. Okay, it's fine. And I walked her through it, and then she said, oh, okay, that was easy. And, and so she's asking really good questions. So that's um, why I made this one for my daughter, because my youngest daughter said, well, Mom, now you have to get her a needle minder. There we go. And my seven-year-old, well, I want to get a heaven and earth, too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dear, you're, you, you got to get a few more projects under your belt, because she's done, she just started one. And it's just a little one I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm like, if someday, if you keep up with it, we'll do it and she was I homeschool and she was kind of going oh, mom, why do I have to learn my numbers to 100 that's just a big number and why do I have to count by 10 and I said, you don't learn your numbers you can't teach cross stitching you would be amazed how fast those numbers were learned yeah she messes up about 80 right in there she gets a little muddled but she's doing really well with her numbers um on the 20th of February, I had a chance to go and hang out with some stitchers, and we just stitched for six hours. Uh, there's a grocery store, and they have a community room, and no charge for the community room, so that's a great price. Yet any food that is consumed there has to be purchased in the store, and they have a pretty extensive food court in the store, and the food isn't like a $15 hamburger or anything. It's not like that, but... <clears throat> and I... I had the wrap. Oh, I love the wraps. They're so good. Well, we had it. Uh, and I encourage you, if you ever have a chance to hang out with stitchers and just stitch and just talk. And, and we had about 14, 15 people there. All different backgrounds, all different projects, all different likes and interests in regard to stitching. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And, and we're going to do it again next month. I hope I can do it. Um, but we had a white elephant exchange, and this was what I picked up from that. And it's from the, the Silver Needle, and um, it's called Smells of Summer. I might do this for the Beat the Heat cell in the finish line group, because one of the things that we do to beat the heat in the summer is grill outside. But here are a lot of the, the fibers. Can you, can you see those fibers? They're like a... They're, they're fuzzy. They're, they're like a... Not a chenille, but like a... Velour a little bit. And then these look like DMC, like number three, number five cotton. And then there's some cute buttons. There's... Okay, let's see. Right here on the pattern. That's a little puppy dog button. And then there's a little... Told you. There's a little bumblebee button there. I'll probably do it again, so this is going to be a very choppy video. Bummer. So I, I'm thinking that's when I'm going to do uh, this project, is during that stitch along. Some of these fibers look a little scary to me, to be honest. There's Oh, and there's some beads, too. Some, uh... Well, actually, there's some seed beads in there, but some bigger ones, too. I don't know, but I got that in White Elephant Gift. I brought a book that I knew I wasn't going to stitch out of, and it was in excellent condition. I had never used it. <clears throat> and then someone had a whole box of magazines that she said, hey, just take what you want. So I took some of these because, like this one, when my seven-year-old is ready, she might attempt a project along that line, maybe not that exact one, or like this little girl here. I thought, well, if I can get her, or this little bear, something you know that we could kit up and she could stitch. So I didn't have to pay for those either. So I think I made off pretty good on that. Um, also, I'll tell you later. What else did I stitch? You know, I didn't just go to this place and... Thankfully, I haven't been dealing with six kids all month, but I 
for the We Love Stitching Sal with the Stitch Mania group anniversary sampler. And ooh, I should I should put put a picture here. This picture will be close to where it was, and here's where I'm at now. I was able to finish all this. And I finished all this white here and this little scallop lacy part and then these boxes and I was working on the personalization I have to redo this because I got off um, I'm not sure exactly what I did but I was way off so this will say 1992 uh, to 2017 I need to move this over about five stitches so um, yeah I had to this original design this box should uh, according to the original design be the same size but it, as you can see, the personalization wouldn't work. And I thought, well, that's silly, because my husband's name is Shannon, and my name is Diane, and, and our names aren't long, you know, 20 letters each or anything. So I don't know why they wouldn't take into account that people's names are bigger. So I, I just chopped those boxes down uh, the same amount on either side. Then down here is all the scallops down there. So I'm just going to continue going down to let you know how long it's been since I stitched on this pattern. I had marked my pattern. I had taken pencil and marked that I was going to cut this box down and this box down. And I was stitching on this one just a little bit because I had just a little fiber left over from here. And I thought, oh, the kids marked my pattern because there was this line. And my two-year-old's kind of in that stage. I thought, boy, you really got lined up there. You did a really good job. And then I started stitching on this box and it's like, there's a line here too what's going on and then I remembered oh, yeah because of the personalization I had to cut those boxes down I mean they, they line up here and I had to laugh at myself about that I was the one who changed my pattern but um, yeah this is the same silk that's in here that you fill in these these boxes and so I'm gonna do mostly the white this white is pearl cotton number eight it's ecru I normally don't like pearl cotton, I'll be honest, but I am loving it on the screen. It gives it a very delicate, lacy feel. Loving it. So I'm stitching on this. Uh, this is week one and week three, so I'm stitch I just stitch on it twice a month. And I'm going. This is the one I want to have done in 2016. If I get no other project done, although that one is done, this is the one I want done. And I think I'm going to make that goal. So I'm going to do all the white, and then there are like little bands of, like there's flowers in here, and there's flowers down here, just little ones, and then the, the white, and then there's some big flowers, and there's some kind of charm, I'll worry about that later. But that is coming along, I, I like seeing progress on that one. Um, I also stitched on Lady Avalon by Heaven and Earth. And uh, with this one week on, one week off, so I have my focus piece, and then I will do another project. I like it because I don't feel guilty about putting the project away because I know I'm going to get it in out again in a week. Um, so I don't feel guilty about it, and I feel like I'm making good progress. And I don't get bored on it. But Lady Avalon is this one. Kevin and Earth Designs. She's a regular size. She doesn't have a mini available at this point. And here's where I'm at. I'm stitching at 22 count beta, 1 over 1 full cross. And this is these are my waist knots. Uh, check out Pam Reed's video on that because she does an excellent job. 2,000 stitches. Even. 45 of them are not 3371. <laughs> Just, I counted them. And of course, the third column bought the first 300, 400 stitches in it, 3371. And honestly, it's not bad because some of my other haids are, are confetti heavy, so it's kind of nice to have the differences. So I worked on that. And uh, the Mirabilia I showed you, the Queen Anne's Lace. 
And this is my Wine and Whip. I've been trying to work on her every day, although this last week I haven't worked on her. With the stomach bug thing, it's it's been easier to have a smaller pattern to stitch than this one. And I'll put a picture here. That should be pretty close to where she was at. Progress! That arch is done. You would not believe how much confetti is in this little bit of area in here. Three stitches of this and two stitches of that. You know what? I need to move my needle minder. I like my frog needle minder, but he's in the way at the moment, so I'll put him aside. Then I went back and I filled in her hair here. Now this open area, that's metallics and beads. I don't mind stitching metallics at the same time I, I do my regular stitching. I'm just not in the mood to do it right now, so that's okay. And I bead at the end. So I did that. I had a little, let me fold her this way, makes it a little easier. I had a little bit on her bodice to fill in missing stitches so I did that and then I've been really working on this fan again this fan you'd be surprised how many colors are actually in that fan it goes from white to 3371 anyway um, you'd be surprised how many colors are in this but a lot of blues and grays but it's coming together nicely and then like she has this um, like this uh, kind of draping shawl. There's another piece to it that comes here. So I'll work on that and then I'll jump into the skirt. And the arch will come down. I gotta finish the fan so then I can start the arch again and bring it down. But yeah, progress, progress. Stitching on her like a half hour a day when I've been able to do that, I I've made, ooh, what is this? Um, I've been able to make some really good progress on her. So I was really happy with that. Did I lose my froggy? Oh, and somebody asked about my needle minder. I don't remember if it was here or Instagram, but this needle minder was a gift to me. And Gina, at G uh, Gina the Unique Boutique, is the person who made it. And somebody bought it for me. So I just wanted to point that out in case... Um, somebody had asked me, and I don't remember if it was here on Instagram. I think it might have been on Instagram, but I wanted to tell you in case you were wondering. Um, oops, I put that over there too. Look at my notes. So, oh, at the at the stitching group, uh, a lady who was there. She was there last time I was there too. Um, she showed a knot. She doesn't like French knots. I know some people do, and if you do, power to you, but um, I don't, I, I avoid them. I will use a full cross, I will use a bead, I just don't like them. Part of the reason I don't like them, especially like eyes on a snowman, see up here my snow, over here, yes, I, I wouldn't work very well on prices, right? But up here, that's the snow sampler by Country Cottage Needleworks, and there's a snowman on there, and I was supposed to use French knots for the eyes. For me, I'll get one French knot, and I'll be perfect. But that second one, it won't. It'll look like he has a black eye. Like one of the stitchers, uh, Liza, said, you know, I, I do the eyeballs, and then, like, one falls out. <laughs> totally understand what she's talking about. Well, one of the ladies there, she had shown a knot last time we had gotten together, and I didn't get a chance to see it, but this time I did. And it's an alternative to the French knot. And for me, when I do a French knot, I feel like I need a third or fourth hand to, like, hold the fabric or something to get the good tension. It's just, yeah, I, I just feel like I need it. And it wouldn't matter if it was in a hoop or not. It just, I don't want a French knot. This knot that she showed me is a lot, oh, it feels so much more natural. I just need to practice it a little more before I could ever do a tutorial. And then um, let me practice it a little more and then I will show you guys this knot. So in case you have issues with French knots like I do. 
Um, and then in March, for it's my birthday month. I thought that was in February, but then I looked at my dates and I was wrong. I was I was. It's actually it's supposed to be in March. It's a piece that you love. I haven't quite figured out which piece I'm going to use for that. But for the spring equinox stitch along with a uh, cross stitch finish line, I showed you the spring chalk project I'm going to do. For the It's Hard to Be Green Stitch Mania, I stitched on green. So I'm going to do that on for that. March for Mirabilia, I'm going to be doing Mirabilia's. I will do um, Queen Anne's Lace. And this for for either It's My Birthday with Cross Stitch Finish Line or March for Mirabilia Cross Stitch Finish Line. I'm going to do this for one and, and the other for the other. I just haven't figured out which one for which event. And then uh, Cross Stitch It's Fun has a Country Cottage Needlework Stitch Along. And I have chosen Summer Co Garden. And I forgot to grab the pattern with me. I'm sorry. I'll insert a picture here. of that particular pattern because I have everything for it. So that's what I plan on for March. Also in March, my hubby has let me, well we talked about it and I signed up for my first cross stitch retreat. I have never ever done a cross stitch retreat. The issue was um, the cost. That was the issue. Because we try and be careful with with our resources like everybody and the retreat is actually in April so um, I'm going to participate in this mystery box kind of secret stitcher exchange and so I've purchased a few things and no I'm not going to show them here in case somebody who's going to the retreat would see them but right now I think there's 60 people going maybe 70 um, yeah, so in March I'm going to be preparing for that. And I am I'm excited to go, but I'm also nervous. It's the first time in a long time I've traveled by myself. Um, it's the first time probably about 15 years I've been on an airplane. Um, I don't get freaked out on airplanes, but the last time I went I had my son who was 10 months old. I had to be on an airplane for a funeral and and he was nursing, so he had to go with me, and yeah, little ones keep you busy on planes. Um, he didn't fuss. He slept the entire flight. So nobody could complain. They all rolled their eyes when they saw him, but he slept for the entire way there and on the entire way back. And when I took another child to, uh, from here to San Francisco, he was fine. And I was worried about his ears. So I nursed him, taken off, and then they gave me a, a pop and a glass of ice. And he wanted to suck on my ice cubes. And so he did that, and then he fell asleep. I fell asleep too, and I kind of went like this to the passenger next to me. I didn't mean to. It was kind of embarrassed when I woke up. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, no, that's fine. Because we he was quiet the entire time. And on the way back, my husband, he, he was on a business trip, so we met him out there. And then he was quiet on the way back. He slept the entire way back. So, yeah, I, I understand the, oh, there's a kid on this plane. That was my kid. So, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous about it. Excited, but nervous about it. You know, in a hotel room by myself. <laughs> for, let's see, I'll fly out on Thursday and come back on a Sunday for three nights. So, um, yeah, and then I'll tell you all about it when I get back, because it's, I think it's going to be a blast. I think it's going to be an absolute blast. <coughs> and, um, yeah, I think it's going to be so much fun. But, I am over a thousand subscribers. I looked at that, my husband was kind of teasing me. He said, well, you should make your YouTube channel do this. I'm like, 
like, well, why? And, and he said, well, if you have over 100 subscribers. I said, well, I, kn I knew I had over 100. And he said, oh, and I looked and I said, oh, wow, I have over 1,000. He said, yeah, I saw that. So my, apparently my husband's watching my channel. Um, but I'm just amazed at how our, I love how our community is growing and we're encouraging each other. And if you haven't watched Joe Gregoire's, I hope I'm saying your last name right, or is it Gregory? Gregoire? Gregory? Um, her, she did a tutorial, but she did a video earlier this week, before that tutorial. And she lists, like, I don't know, about eight new floss tubers, and she puts the link in her description box. I went through and I subscribed to all of them. I encourage you to do that because, like, how crazy, cowgirl, I'm going to say it wrong, cowgirl with a K, cowgirl Kate, um, oh, that's going to bug me now. I watched all of her videos, and she does the Celtic ladies, and I love, Lavender and Lace is my favorite all-time designer, and she has done conversions that are absolutely amazing, and I've seen a number of them online, like the Ireland one that she showed, and I did not realize, yeah, cowgirl Kate, I did not realize that that was her, and then now she's doing videos, I think so cool. Um, this is Cowgirl Paints a Plenty. I know it says I have to hit the subscribe button, but this is my husband's YouTube account, so I do not subscribe to cross stitch channels. I do not want to. Um, yeah. Of course, then I was looking at a certain video because somebody had asked me a question about a project, and I, I'm trying to remember which video it was in. And so then he said, oh, you know, a thousand people have seen that. Wow, some people actually watched it twice. I thought, really? Oh, of course, this is the man who said, you know, okay, he games online. So you talk about, you know, ladies talking. But yeah, I thought I'd tell my guys that my wife... <laughs> I'm going to say that if you're drinking something, put it down, please, because I don't want you to, to choke. Um, how did he word it? Yeah, I was going to tell the guys that my wife locks the door and makes videos in our bedroom and doesn't let me watch. He told me that and I said, what? <laughs> Let's just say he's been married long enough because we'll be celebrating number 24 next month. Um, he knows that would not go over very well. <laughs> he, he's learned... But yeah, he teases me about this whole YouTube thing. Um, but on our ninth anniversary, he came home with nine red roses and one white rose. And I, I, I was in the middle of putting supper physically in the oven, so I said, okay, put it over there for just a couple minutes. And then I went over and I literally smelled the roses. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I think it was Josh, the sword, as an Excalibur of a knitter. Um... But he said, Mom, why are there nine roses? I said, well, that's to celebrate the years that we're celebrating. What's the white rose for? I said, well, that's for the years to come. And my husband said, oh, I'm so glad you understood that. And I looked at him and I said, what are you talking about? He had argued with the florist for 20 minutes because she kept saying, you have to bring home a dozen roses. If you don't bring home a dozen, your wife's going to be mad. And I said, what is she thinking? You th a lot more thought went into this arrangement. You know, the number of years we're celebrating, the the white rose for the future years, that was so much sweeter than just a dozen roses here. Anniversary dozen roses. So he's tried to do that every year since. Although there are a few years that the roses, there was something wrong with them. And since our anniversary is March 14th, you know, month after February, then roses usually are more reasonably priced. <laughs> so that's why I wasn't too upset about Valentine's Day illness, although I didn't like seeing my husband. Oh, he was miserable. Poor guy. Um, so he's been doing that every year. And last year, the florist kind of said, why do you only want 23 red roses and, and a white rose? And he explained, and then the florist is like, love it. So this year, I might be getting 24. 
what was it last year? Yeah, he still brought home roses. Last year he tried to get me flowers for Valentine's Day, and so they sent him. The tulips were frozen solid, as in clink, clink on the counter. Frozen solid. So they replaced them. Frozen solid again. <laughs> so my husband said, why don't we wait until our anniversary? But last year I'm sure he brought home roses. Or maybe he didn't. Because we were worried about the, it was so stinking cold. We were worried about it. This year isn't as cold. So, um, okay, enough about, about, <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. So I'm just kind of babbling to keep myself awake. Sorry. Um, but I thank you all for subscribing. I'm just amazed I have a thousand subscribers. Um, I'm sorry I don't have the energy to do a giveaway. I'll do a giveaway though. I've done two giveaways. So I'm going to do another one sometime in the future. But April I have the retreat. Oh, a bunch of us. Oh, it's it's going to be so much fun. And D, when she did her videos for the Hade retreat and Carrie, a uh, kitty crew and Bonnie. Was it Bonnie? Somebody else did kind of a vlog. That was so inspiring. I loved seeing that. I haven't figured out how to do that myself. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So I look so forward to that. And then May we have our son graduating. So all those details need to be done. And then the schedule might lighten up a little bit. I always say lighten. Because then I have a lot of home, my list of home improvement projects. And my husband does not like to paint walls and stuff. Um, I do. And so that that's the main thing on my plan. He has some outdoor things he wants to get done. But, okay, I gotta shut up so I can actually, you yeah, know, you could hear my kids outside the door. Yeah. In the mornings is pretty good. It's at night, we're always going, okay, who's gonna get sick? Last night two of them were sick. And then mom doesn't sleep very well because she's always hearing for them. So I can help them if I need to. And I, I've been having the weirdest dreams. Waking up crying kind of dreams. It, it, about germs and illness and sickness. And, oh, I can't wait until this is gone so I can actually sleep. And yes, I've been dosing myself whatever I can so I don't get it. Uh, Osis, whatever. I can't remember the name. But... Okay, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> but I, I thank you so much for watching and commenting. And if you want to ask questions, ask them. Um, but yeah, this, this pattern is a free download off of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, at least for now. So I would, I would definitely check it out sooner than later. Um, the Snowflower Diaries. If you join the Facebook group, you have access to those patterns. I tried to print it off of the blog, and it didn't. I didn't like the format, so I joined the group on Facebook, and those are so cute. Um, three L threads, I think, is stitching them, and I know that there are several other floss tubers who are stitching them. So I'm not stitching them yet, but I will be. So I'm gonna. Okay, Diane. It's Minnesota goodbye. You know, it takes another 30 minutes before you're actually out the door, but. Bye, Facebook. I will talk to you again in March, Lord willing. The sickness will be gone. And um, keep making those videos. I love them.